One, two, three. All right, I got it, I got it, I got it. Best way to identify a venomous snake, triangular shaped head, that's it. No, that's not it, that's not, it's the elliptical pupil. If they have cat eyes, if a snake has, there it is right there, elliptic, no. There's a rhyme, I got it, here it is, here it is. Red on black, friend of Jack, yellow, red on yellow, venom mellow, no. Any rattling sound, definitely a venomous snake. Mic drop. Hey, my name's Rob, and I've been dealing with venomous and non-venomous snakes for the last 40 plus years. And in this video, I'm gonna show you the best method for identifying venomous snakes in your area with four simple steps. And here's the cool part. You can use this method all over the world and for non-venomous snake. You stay with me through the end of this video and you'll see this can change your life in ways you could never imagine. Let's do this thing. Step one, go outside and look for a snake. Step two, find a snake. Step three, get close enough to see the diamond-shaped head, elliptical pupil, recite the rhyme, or hear a rattle. Step four, look in a mirror. If you see two fang marks, congratulations, you've identified a venomous snake. Okay, obviously this is not the way to identify a venomous snake. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. There's a reason I put it in. I'm going to explain. We're going to get to the method in just a few seconds. Real important that I point this out though, so hang with me. The high percentage of the time, people are going to say, did it have a diamond-shaped head? Did you see elliptical pupils? Did it have some sort of red on yellow on black on yellow on red? Did you hear any kind of rattling noise? Those are the common responses you get. So for example, the triangular head, non-venomous snakes can do that garter snakes, bull snakes, and water snakes, to name a few. Elliptical pupils. Are you really going to get that close to a snake to see if it has elliptical pupils and end up like my friend? <gasps> or how about that rhyme? Red on black, friend of Jack, red on yellow, kill a fellow. And then you forget when you're out there or you run into some aberrant snake that's got just weird patterns and colors, but you still want to use the rhyme. Here in Arizona, we have a shovel nose snake where red touches yellow. So if you didn't know any better, think, oh man, it's a coral snake. So using the rhyme alone, not a good thing. What if you're hearing some sort of rattling noise? Is that 100% a rattlesnake? Not necessarily necessarily. A lot of snakes vibrate their tail on the debris in the ground as a defense mechanism, as a warning. So I'm not saying that those cannot be characteristics of venomous snakes. They can. But using one isolated one, two isolated, not a good way to identify venomous snakes. I have a better method. I'm going to get into it right now. Step one, you're going to need to find a good, solid website. Lucky for you, I put a lot down in the description, thanks to my folks over at Facebook. For me, I like sites that give a description of the snake. They give you a lot of pictures of the snake. They give you the habitat and where they're located. If you really want to kick it up a notch, you could always buy a field guide for your state. That also is a great way to identify the snakes in your area. Step two, this is really important. This is the crux of the whole thing here. I bet you some of you out there, car could go whizzing by and you'd say, that was a 69 Camaro. Or maybe we're out walking around and there's mud or snow and you see some animal tracks and you say, oh those? Those are bobcat tracks, yeah. So it's like anything, you gotta practice. It's not gonna take you that long. Five minutes a day, 10 minutes. You find your site, you go on, look at the venomous snakes in your area, and just look at the pictures, familiarize yourself. A lot of you may have fear out there, right? So it's real important to eliminate that fear by getting in there and finding out what's really in your state, knowing what counties and where they are and when they come out. That's gonna eliminate a lot of fear right out of the gate. Step three of four, you're gonna be outside, you're gonna be hiking, you're gonna be walking, you're gonna be in your front yard, you're gonna be fishing, hunting, whatever. You're gonna see a snake. And what you're going to do is you're going to calmly take out your camera. And because you watched my rattlesnake video, which I'll put a link up in here. So three and a half foot diamond back. And people ask me all the time, right? They go, man, you know, how do you come up on this? Why don't they rattle? You're going to realize that they're not out to get you. So you're going to stay calm and you're going to take a ton of pictures. Nice, crisp, clean, close up pictures because you're going to use your zoom. You're not going to get too close to it because you're not an expert yet, but you're getting there. Here's the fun part. You know what the fun part is? Step four, man, because you're going to be in your vehicle going back home. And you're going to say to your kids, your friends in the car, bet you five bucks I know what that snake is. You're going to get home. You're going to go to the website you've been looking at. You already know what it is because you, you've been doing step two over and over again, right? You identified it correctly. And you're going to start collecting your money from your friends and your kids. So you're still not sure though. So you go on Facebook and visit my friends on the Facebook snake identification page. I'll put a link down there. Great people over there. They can help identify snakes. Good place to learn too. So if you have Facebook and you want to get on and learn more about identifying snakes, check that out because it's a good resource. So I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, why am I doing this for snakes? I don't get it, man. Cars are cool, right? You know, animal tracks, they're pretty cool. Snakes, not so much, dude. You're making me do a lot of work. Why? Well, one, you clicked on the video. You must wanted to identify a venomous snake. And two, you know, like we talked about before, it's going to take away that fear. You're going to know what's in your area, in your state, right? And three, it just makes you a more interesting person. I mean, what's the harm in knowing a little bit more about the snakes around you? Nothing, right? And here's how your life is going to change, Tony. Can I call you Tony? What's your name? What? 
Tony! Tony, what's gonna happen is somebody's gonna call you from your neighborhood and they're gonna say, I heard you know about snakes. Can you come down and see what's in my garage? And you're gonna go down and tell them it's a harmless bull snake. And then you're gonna get known in the state. The state's gonna call you up and go, man, Tony, we've been hearing good things about you in your city. We want you to help us out around the state with some projects. Do you mind doing that? And you do it. And then it's gonna happen, Tony. Then it's gonna happen. Hello? Hello, is this Tony? Uh, yeah, this is Tony. Who's this? Hey, this is Gigi from Animal Planet. How are you today, Tony? I'm doing okay. What's what's going on? Well, you seem to be trending in the news a lot with your snake identification skills. And we have an idea for a new show. So what's the idea? We're thinking of calling it Tony the Snake Guy. Ten episodes, 100,000 per episode. You interested? All I ask, just remember me when you're rich and famous, Tony. That's it. So in all sincerity, if you liked it, please hit the like button. If you want to see more of my videos, subscribe. I'll put some videos right here you can check out, some of our snake adventures. We have more coming up in Arizona, some real trips, some more education, might even be heading to Mexico. So uh, if you want to see that stuff, definitely subscribe, stay tuned. Thanks for watching all the way to the end. And again, just remember me when you're rich and famous.